G'day, welcome to SA Wine Weekly. I'm your host, Nathan Go. On SA Wine Weekly, we go through three amazing wines. We taste the wines, we pair them with delicious foods. We've got the winemaker with us to ask questions about. If you ask a decent question or put a decent comment up, you can win the bottle of wine. Stay tuned toward the end of the show as well because we have an amazing deal for the wine lovers. On today's show, we have an amazing guest. She grew up in the McLaren flat area, right next to the Scarp and Tonys, worked the cellar door <coughs> from 15 years of age. And then she went on to university to do a winemaker's degree. And then flew off into the skies as a flight attendant with Qantas, had great success there, came back, started Full From Grace Wines. We're so lucky to have Jill Gordon-Smith. Welcome, Jill. Thanks, Nathan. Good to be here. Good to uh, be here talking to everyone. Excellent. So we've brought in three wines. Let's, let's get straight. I'm, get straight I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm hanging, hanging out. out. Okay. So tell me the three that you brought with you. Okay. So the three wines that I brought tonight are uh, Skin Contact Tarnay. So I don't know if anyone's tried orange wine, but this is what we would consider to be an orange wine. Not oranges in the wine, but just orange in colour. So it's an oxidised white, but it's going to be really interesting Excellent. for you to try. And? And Arnais is an Italian grape variety. We have a Montepulciano Rosato, which is a little bit heavier than a rosé. So it's a really cl um, classic Italian style that I make here in South Australia. And the other one's called Catnip, and Catnip is a blend, and that's our little fun blend, which is a blend of... Um, uh, Carignan, which is a, a French variety from the south of France that we grow down at Langhorn Creek. It has Nero and a little bit of Syrah from Blue at Spring, so it's a really interesting little blend. So probably some of the wines you may not, or grapes you may not have tried before, but really worth looking out. Oh, I'm so excited to get into cool, it. Cool, let's so try this. So this is... Um, are you going to pour? This, I'll pour for you. Yeah, yeah I'm good at this. Like, like you usually do? Yeah, I know. God, this going, takes me back to being a hostie. So... Um, Whoa, look at that. Whoa. A bit more. We're not tasting. You want a bit more? Yeah, no, oh, okay. We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're drinking. We're you not don't tasting. have to drive anywhere? No. Okay. So this is our nace. And um, normally um, you might see this as a very fresh, crisp style wine, but I make it in a really interesting style. I can smell it without even... Yeah. I know when you came down to the winery, you saw those big clay pots that I have there. Yeah. So I make these in a 300 litre big clay amphora which is a really old Italian way of doing this. It's a very ancient way. So, hang on a minute. We're talking big clay pots. Mm, 300 litres, clay pots. And um, we have half of the wine goes through a normal sort of winemaking process in, in normal big um, fermenters. And then the other half of those grapes go into 300 litre clay pots and they sit there for about three months. And then we slow... I'm still not working out clay, clay, clay pots. Oh, here we are. The, oh, oh, the oh, massive look, you pots. You can see my massive pots. Yeah. My very expensive yeah, massive garden pots, but they're a little bit um, uh, a little bit different than a normal garden pot. I have these specifically made for me. And you can see here, you've got the um, the skins just in contact with the juice. And this these skins sit there for about three months. And then um, I press off. And I'm actually going to be pressing those this weekend. And Excellent. then it will be mixed up with the other um, wine that I make sort of in a fairly traditional way. So it's really interesting. And one thing is the colour. I oh, know when you said orange wine, like when we were down, down in the uh, winery, I was expecting, being the novice, I was expecting it to taste like orange. But the colour, I've never seen anything like it. Probably another name for this would be amber wines. So orange wines or amber wines. But what they really are, it's just a wine, a white wine that's made like a red wine. So you leave the skins in contact with the juice, probably the same way that you would do with a red wine to get the colour. And so it acts, acts as, a, as a preservative. And it gives it this really interesting um, aroma. And it's probably a, um, a, a red wine drink is white. Because it's that's, that's, that is a great way to... I've noticed that dryness at the end. Mm. And, it, and it reminded me of a red wine. What do you think of this? Oh, blown away. I've, I've never had anything like it whatsoever. The smell, mm -hmm. to totally different, totally different. It's got a lot of spice. And it, it has, but... Yeah, and those I'll, tropical fruits. The tropical fruits of a white wine, but then, yeah, it's obviously it's, it's totally different than I've ever um, experienced before, and I actually really like it. 
Have you tried sherry before? I have tried sherry. So it's got sort of the nose almost of a, of a sherry. It's slightly oxidised, but on the palate, really clean. In your mouth, it's really clean and crisp. Mm. Amazing. No spittoon on this show. No. <laughs> well, we're not, we're not a wine tasting show. We're no, a, it's fantastic. So we actually drink the wine. So rather well, than just taste it, we're going to drink it. And then we're going to also pair it with some food as well. Oh, that's pretty exciting. So, if you've got any questions out there, yeah, so come in with um, any questions. ask you any questions. You've got to have questions about orange wine. You have to. So, something I prepared a little bit earlier. Oh, I have to put my glasses on for this, definitely. So, this what we've really got here is we have, I hope you like it, I didn't check first. That's but all right. We've got go. octopus, See? crispy octopus, right? crispy potatoes. Yep. With rocket and cherry tomato. This is fantastic. Who made this? Where this is, this is from? from. It's from the locals. Yeah, Don't tell everyone. They're just they're just down the street yeah. on Beach Road, and authentic Italian cuisine. And we gave him some bottles of your wine. Oh, fantastic! I need you to be the Italian expert. <laughs> Let's hear how you pronounce mm. it with not without a mouthful. I'm just shoving all that in my mouth. Okay, Trattoria di Roma. Angelo. Magnificent Fantastic. guy. Fantastic. Ab absolute Ciao, legend. Angelo. And fell in love with your wines. And he, he's this Italian, is Italian, of course. This is his pairings. So we Fantastic. gave him the wine and he's come up with what awesome. he would actually And this is a really good pairing with this particular style of wine. So this is a, a wine that will go with either red or white um, meats, but really fantastic with seafood, especially with a bit of char on it. Mm. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Hard to chew. Crispy. It's gorgeous. Beautiful texture. Oh, we've got our first question. Ah, okay, Greg. How long does it take to produce? That's a really good question, Greg. So, um, probably this wine, about a year in barrel. So, after we've made it, so um, it goes into barrel for a year. But the, the part that's made with the skins of the grapes that we leave in contact with the skins, I leave that for an extra three months. So around about 12 to 15 months by the time we release it. And uh, it, it's been in some pretty awesome places around Australia. So I'm, I'm really happy. And I took this wine to Italy, not last year, the year before. And I showed it at a really big wine festival there called Indigena. So I sort of took um, the coals back to Newcastle. But yeah, about about between twelve and fifteen months, depending on uh, um, on how it feels and how it tastes, because I do everything by taste. Excellent. So you took the wine you made in McLaren Vale over to the Italians. Back to the Italians. It was awesome, and I. I and actually, they loved it. They loved it. I wasn't kicked out of the country, which was fantastic. Oh, it is absolutely superb. How well did the octopus go oh, with it? It matches perfectly because the octopus has some savoury characters and this wine has some great savoury characters to it. Yeah, excellent. Well, d don't hold back on the questions. Fire, fire the questions through. You've got to have some on, some on orange wine. Has anyone tried anyone tried any orange wines before? Because there's some fantastic um, orange wines out there at Who, the moment. And um, other South Australian producers yeah, making Yeah, Koleski make a really fantastic orange wine. They're, um, They're in the Brosser, Brosser. yep. Uh, there's uh, a lot of people around the Clarence Bar, especially those smaller producers now making orange wines. Have you <laughs> broken into the Dutch market? Ah ha ha. No, not yet. <laughs> Great idea though. Great idea. We don't make enough, unfortunately, because it's really, really um, quite time consuming to make this. And uh, it's. So we're, I guess we to need to explain it. that to uh, the punters out there that you are a very small batch. We are tiny. Yeah. We are really, really tiny. We're minimal intervention. We don't add um, a lot, we don't add anything to our wines apart from a little bit of sulphur, and that's it. So if you've got allergies, these sorts of wines, these are you know, basically sulphur free. And uh, you said it was in restaurants? Are, yeah, it's in some great restaurants like Momofuko Sabu in Sydney and Cutler and & Co. Um, Fino Vino have this on the pour. So um, Sharon Romeo is an amazing local who has a restaurant in the Brossa and also a restaurant in the city. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's done pretty well. It's been a lot of great bottle shops. And um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. It's been on some good lists. It's been on Arana, all sorts of places. So um, if the locals from South Australia wanted to get a bottle of it? Just at the cellar door. Just so, at your cellar yeah, door? only at the cellar door. We, um, we keep a little bit back for the cellar door. So if you ever want to come in and try it, we're about to reopen on the 13th of June. 
for tasting. So you can, we'll always open a bottle for you. Excellent. And we'll so, talk you through it. You've got to explain to me more. We need questions, people. Oh, We're to win interactive. This wine. This, oh, I've just got to tell you, this wine actually got number four in the Drink Easy Awards for Orange Wines in Australia and was number six in the Hot 100 in 2014. Wow. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's done pretty well. So if you want to win this, there really isn't that much of it. Oh, you, so you ask to, a good question. Yeah, you'd have, to, <laughs> you'd have to want to win it, really, if, if you've never had an orange wine before. So... Um, we are totally interactive. Flip your questions through. Jill's here to answer them. Um, let, tell me what, why Italian? What, what drew you to, to Italian wines? Italian grapes. Well, growing up, in, grapes, growing yeah. up in McLaren Vale next to Scuff and Tony's, I spent a lot of my time in Paula's kitchen eating. And uh, I was a uh, flight attendant with Qantas for 20 years, so I spent a lot of time travelling internationally. And I fell in love with Italy, its wines, its people, its grapes. And I decided to, when I came back and started to make wine again, uh, Italian varieties were just something that really worked well in McLaren Vale because they're grapes that don't need a lot of water, they handle the heat, and they're fantastic for drought conditions. So um, for me, they're also very textural, savoury, and they're great with food. So that's why I decided to use Italian varieties. And plus, everyone else was making wonderful Shiraz and Cabernets, and I, I couldn't compete with that, and I didn't want to because Italian grapes and, and uh, Italian wines are my passion. It's a very, mine had a hole in it for some reason. Yours does have a hole it in it. have these, yeah. these brand new glasses. Oh, Shane Lester. Shane Lester. Ah, oh, it'll be fantastic. Which one, Shane? What's the uh, Italian eatery on Beach Road? Ah, he's oh, talking about one. Angelo's. Oh, Angelo's? Yes. It it's, works. It's, Angelo's already... Tested this, it works really well with Angelo's wine. Oh, Ange <laughs> Angelo would. Um, with Angelo's food. If there was it's enough. Delicious. Oh, he, he would love it. Yeah. And his, his food is superb. Oh, why fall from grace? That was a good question. Okay. I get asked this a lot. Fall from Grace is the name of my label because I left a really high paying job travelling the world in the aviation um, industry to come into the wine industry and. Uh, not make much money, but it was all about passion. So someone said to me, oh, Jill, that's a fall from grace. And so I thought that's a really good name for a winery, fall from grace. So that was my fall from grace, which to me is means jumping without a parachute into something you're passionate about. So we should have more fall from graces. Well, we're talking about that. Um, SA Wine Weekly and Achieve Video Marketing would be exactly the same thing. Maybe I should have called the video company that. But no, I well, have to sue you then. True. So it's, so it's fall from grace video, no, it probably doesn't work. Not quite as well as a wine. So tell me, we started off in McLaren Vale. I remember way back when, a tiny... When you were a little little guy. Well, I don't think anyone would believe I was little. But, <laughs> but yeah, you it, true. When you first started off mm -hmm. in, in the main street of McLaren Vale? I was in the tiny shop where Half Cut Hair is. That was us next to Blessed Cheese. Yeah, next that to Blessed Cheese. That was my first shop when I left flying. And I started a bottle shop in McLaren Vale that sold organic, biodynamic, international wines and natural wines. So um, it was a really interesting premise to start a bottle shop on. And um, we then moved into somewhere bigger at Wollonga and then finally we've had our last move to Aldinga. So we're just at the Temperance Precinct. We'll go, we'll go through Aldinga yeah. in a minute because what an amazing place. To yeah, it's pretty come cool, Come and hang out it? and have a glass of wine. It's really cool. And learn about wine. Absolutely. But I reckon we'll shortly be announcing the winner and um, maybe if I could bribe Jerry not to put it up, I could um, just keep it for myself or re-gift it. You've got it. contacts. So yes, I okay. do have contacts, that's true. <laughs> You've got contacts in the industry. So we've got um, Holly Jane. Hey Holly, it looks delicious and it tastes delicious. Oh, I think she's really going to enjoy it. So you're going to have to come down to the cellar door and have a good tasting and, and uh, see what orange wines are all about. Yeah, come down and... Um, and it goes really well with this. Yeah, maybe perfect. come down via Angelo's. Via Angelo's, absolutely. Yeah. And then um, say good day to Angelo. Say that you saw him on SA Wine Weekly with his awesome octop crispy it's octopus. It's really gorgeous. Isn't it? It's, I'm actually struggling because I just want to eat it. And it's You've been difficult. very restrained. It's I good. have been quite we've restrained. Got, I think we've got a few more courses to get We do through, have yeah. a few more courses and a few more beautiful wines. But I must say this wine... Is absolutely amazing. Thank you. I'm pretty so, happy with that. So now we, you're not a huge social media fan, are you? No, I'm not. We don't do a lot. Look, we, it's not we're not a huge social media fan, but we're just a bit. 
we're just very niche and we're really small and we really like to be inclusive and and you know not to be snobby about wine but we are really tiny and i like it that way well but you do have facebook instagram we've got Twitter. facebook instagram so fall from grace wine oh holly did holly win that holly won yay she looks uh, rather happy as well. You're going to love it. Awesome. She is going to love I'm it. I'm so glad that you've got that wine. Fantastic. Well, well done, Holly. So, well done. Um, yeah, I really want to um, jump into the next bottle of oh, wine. Oh, okay. So, Hello. Are you going to open that one for I'm me? I'm going to open it with my um, Harcourt's, just not, not, a, not a blatant plug <laughs> or anything, just my Harcourt's, thanks, Cotty and Carly, bottle, bottle opener, that they slipped into my fridge without me knowing. Aha. Uh -huh. So, we're going to... Crack it open like a beer. And you can see the wings on the label. Yep. That's yep. a direct um, representation of my old hosty wings. Ah. So, hence... Um, I thought that was angelic. No, <laughs> I'm not angelic at all. Never have been. But this is, um, yeah, this is my sort of nod to my old hosty days with the wings. Okay, this one's going to be really interesting because this has got a beautiful colour. You're, you're my guest, but you, you can pour, okay. yeah. So... What we're looking at here is a Montepulci sorry, Montepulciano. Yeah. Which is, you know, in Australia we like to shorten things. So, so Monty. You can call it Monty. Yeah, I'm not gonna have to call it Monty. And Monty is such a great, great variety for the Flurio. It really is. And um, I get to taste an awful lot of uh, different wines from the Flurio. Yeah. Because I am the wine writer for Flurio Living. So Yeah, I well, have, yeah, well I, was gonna I was gonna mention yeah. that. Tell, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, well I've been writing for Flurio Living for about four years now, but I've written for a lot of publications before that, yeah. including Italianicious, another Italian An Australian adventure. writer for an Italian? It was, is that, was actually an Australian magazine, ah, yeah, okay. for quite a long time. But this is Montepulciano, and it's originally from the Abruzzo region, and there's an awful lot of people in McLaren Vale that come from Melise or Abruzzo, and it's made into this gorgeous wine called Cerasuolo d'Abruzzo, and this Cerasuolo means little cherry, and you can see right. from the colour. Yeah, it's very cherry, isn't it's it? It's really cherry. I was like thinking the colour's very different. Mm. It's um, a lot lighter. And you uh, you turn it over on the white to see. Yeah, and if you have a look yeah. on the white, you can see right through this. You can see your fingers through it. So it's a little sort of like the same sort of colour as a pinot. Oh, well, we could talk about pinots for hours. I know you love pinot. My, my favourite. This one really does. Montepulciano's got those lovely cherry aromatics. It oh, smells like cherry. A... It's It just makes you want to dive in and drink it. It does. Well, let's... Let's drink it. Let's try it. Oh, that's a little bit dangerous. This is, this oh. is, I have a word for wines like this, smashable. Smashable, that is a, that is so a great. These are smashable wines. So these are really, on, on a drinkability scale, yep. you could put this right up there because it's so drinkable, it's so gluggable, it's so smashable. So we, um, very of, of, terms. of course, we always drink responsibly, responsibly on SA Wine Weekly. But can I tell you, these wines are low in alcohol. So this wine is only 13% alcohol. It doesn't taste it. No, it's got a lot of flavour. I'm hanging out to see what um, Angelo's uh, paired, paired with it anyway. Did Angelo try this? Yeah. Good I would, choice. I actually wouldn't have picked this myself, but Jeez, oh. um, it looks alright. It looks it? fantastic. I can see the mussels. So this is the risotto. The, yeah, this is the uh, risotto marinara. Oh, fantastic! This is going to go really well with this particular wine. I think before we've even even tried the food, because this wine has good acidity. It really makes your mouth wet. It yeah. just makes you salivate, and so this is going to go so well with that. Explain to laymen like myself, and maybe mm. some people that are watching. The, we talked about the tannins in the first wine, sure. which made it dry. So tannins dry you dry all of the saliva out of your mouth. They make your, your mouth really dry, and they leave a sort of furry sensation, whereas acid makes your mouth wet. So if you do a dribble test, so if you sort of taste this wine, tip your head forward, your mouth still keeps getting wet. Yeah. So it produces saliva. And is that actually a thing? And that's a acidity. A yeah. No, a dribble no, test. I, is, I, well, is that something you When I'm teaching, yeah. I use the dribble test to, to teach people about acid. So the more more spit, the more saliva you get, the more acidic the wine. Oh, hang on, we've got um, Adam Normington. Love a smashable wine, absolutely. I think he he would really enjoy it. He's a bit of a connoisseur. Ah. Adam, and he would really enjoy this wine. And Michelle. And Michelle, 
She likes smashable ones too. Good Michelle on was on last week and she cooked the amazing burgers. Oh, God, I miss burgers. I'm, oh, really, I'm really happy with this because well, yeah, you know what I like with Italians. If, uh, if we had a fork to go with it, we'd probably be pretty good. Aha. Uh -huh. we, we use a spoon? spoon. Oh. We're not, we're not, a, di we're not a dining etiquette show, are no, we? No, we're not. That's fine. I've had too many meals standing up in aircraft cabins. Yeah, as you would have. Mm. 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 Yum. Really amazing flavour. If you could actually, if we had smell a vision you'd, and taste a vision, you'd really love this. Mm. Quite rich. We've got a shout out. I'll keep calling it Angelo. Angelo's the owner. Trattoria di Roma. Yeah, well, Australian. Trattoria di Roma. Yeah, which just means mm. Trattoria what, what, of Rome. Is Angelo from Rome? I think he is. Oh, fantastic. I think he just pretends to be wherever his Italian <laughs> guests are from. The other week I heard he was from Malfessa and then mm -hmm. I heard he was from Sicily. He's just playing along oh, with whoever. Sicily. He's just playing along with whoever's there. Mm -hmm. Mind you, when we uh, went to collect the meal, absolutely full. With he's, social distancing. He, well, you can't, can't have many people in there. <laughs> but he's um was absolutely full and there was people getting knocked back. Angelo? And and this it's this is the reason people. why, isn't it? I wouldn't have picked seafood. It's fantastic, but can it you is, see it? with the prawns, with the richness of that stock and those mussels, mm -hmm. it's going really well with this wine. So you don't just pair white wines with, you know, white meats or red wines. That's something I've Try learned. Try everything. That's something I've learned. And yeah. I think Anna was the first one to bring it up when she came on. Was it's not all about. There's no rules. It's, it's what no you rules. like, and this is what Angelo obviously had the wine and went. Mm. This is what's going to go with it. And sometimes it's the most interesting and unusual pairings that really make a dish and really make that food and wine match. So while, while I tuck into this mm. and give you a question to answer mm -hmm. so I can eat, um, would be, you're right into the wine education. Yes, so um, I was actually 2017 Wine Communicators of Australia, Wine Educator and Wine Communicator of the Year. And so I run a big wine school for TAFE SA called the Wine and Spirits School, TAFE SA. And uh, I've been teaching from way back in Qantas days when I run the Sommelier in the Sky program there. So I've been, yeah, that's my other passion is education. So I get to travel the world talking about education. And I run the wine school here with some fantastic lecturers. So, and, and um, is it um, online or...? We do both. So we do face-to-face right? -face currently online because of COVID. Oh, yeah. No, good but chance, we, we? Yeah, so we do, we teach all across the state. So, and, and in McLaren Vale, we teach, you know, Herbre, we teach in the regions. It's fantastic. So, so it's a really great school. Who would be your, one of your favourite people that you've taught? Students, oh. who would be one of your I've got students? I, that's really hard to like our dear, because I love them all and I've got some really amazing students. Katie Spain was one of my students. She was an amazing student. Yeah. So Katie writes for The Advertiser and Merrick Watts, he's one of my, he's my favourite student because he's my naughtiest student. Trying to keep him in line was not easy. So we um, are giving this bottle of wine away while we're chatting about yeah. it. Yeah. And um, so a few more questions, a few more comments. We are interactive. It's You've got Jewel here. Pick her brain while she's here. Ask me anything. About, um, actually, I'll, let I'll me refrain that. Truth. Ask me anything about wine. Ask her anything about <laughs> wine, yeah. Well, I'm glad we picked that up. Or shopping or shoes. We can do that as well. Well, yeah, true. But, um, no, ask me anything about wine that you want to know, and I'll, I'll give you a... Can you buy online? Yes. We do um, have a, an online shop, just full from grace... Uh, Dot com dot au. You can go straight through to that, or you can come and see us as from the 13th. So um, we're down, and you can just pop in and see us and do a tasting, and we'll yeah talk you through some wines, let you have a taste through what we've got. I reckon that um, going down to see you is the best way. Yeah, you look, you you get us there, and everybody in the shops really um, passionate about wine. They're not snobby. They're really going to really. Um, give you some good information and, and steer you in the right direction. And it's not expensive. We have from really reasonably priced wines through to really expensive wines. Yeah, but you've got some amazing wines at around the $30, $35. Everything's around 30 bucks. Yeah. I think that's a really good sweet spot for finding really good quality wines, but you'll find wines you won't find anywhere else in our shop. So um, go, going back to the wine, mm. um, what Italian influence have you drawn in making this wine? Okay, well firstly the grape is Mont yep. Montepulciana and where it comes from. And secondly, I have a very good friend called Cristiana Tiberio who's a fantastic winemaker in um, Abruzzo in Italy. And I always loved her wine and I said to her, I really want to make a Montepulciano Rosato. So she was very kind and assisted me with making this in 
in the best possible way. And this has been one of our, our favourite wines. This this sells out all the time. It's in some really great restaurants. Excellent. Yeah. And, and, and it's so drinkable. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> not that the orange wine wasn't. No, but this one's really easy to drink. Oh, it is. And... Um, at my first sip, my answer was it's dangerous. But um, I know. And look, half a bottle's almost gone. I know. Smash. What do you? What smashable. You, smashable wine. It's smashable. So, Luke, what do you think's most common mistake people make rewine? I think they worry too much what other people think, and Very they good and they really worry about how to describe wines. And with all of our students, I think that that's that's the thing that people get most concerned about is how do I describe what I like. And I think the, the best thing is to talk to your bottle shop person, talk to your sommelier if you go out and there's one in your restaurant, and go into a cellar door and just ask questions and don't be embarrassed. Never, ever be embarrassed. If someone treats you badly and won't give you, a, you know, an answer that makes you feel comfortable and, and makes you feel you know, embarrassed to be in that cellar door, just walk. walk. Go, Take go a to walk. another one. Go to another go, one. Go, go. Yeah. And you never stop learning. True. That, that, really that's, good question. That was a great question. It's a great um, question. Good work, Luke. Um, so, oh, Shane. Oh, being a wine drinker, I'm being educated tonight. Top guest. Oh, thank you, Shane. I didn't have much <laughs> nice, nice to say about the host, but yeah, can't, can't see, can't see Shane winning. Talk about the host, man. You might have a chance of winning, but no, true. Yeah. That's a, and the education. I, I'm going to do your course. I, you really look. It's fantastic. Right. So. Um, Jerry's just been whipping, so he's, winding us up. Yeah, he's telling us about the cellar door video. So ah, tell me about okay. where we, we touched on old dinger. Yeah. We're, oh, look, here's my gorgeous cellar door. We're really different than a normal cellar door. I open Friday nights, not during COVID, um, from five till nine, so one night a week, and then we're open Saturday, Sundays, or you can come by appointment. But our cellar door is really different. You'll get to talk to people, meet people from the wine industry, people who don't know anything about wine. Everybody's welcome. We have a small producer every week that, and we look at their wines, not just mine, because I'm really here to support other people in the industry. Excellent. And you come in, it's pretty busy, it's a lot of fun, and we always have something different. So um, you'll get to try wines before you buy them. And we sell um, at retail prices to drink in, not at restaurant prices. So it's a really good, event. So, um, oh, we've got a question. Why the pressure cap and not a screw cap? Good question. <clears throat> Two reasons. One, I really wanted to make this wine approachable and look really approachable. So um, it's in champagne bottles, so the bottle's really expensive, but I use the, um, the uh, crown seal because I wanted people just to be able to just open it during the week and drink it with their food and not feel like they had to keep it. Ah, uh, when am I open? So we open Saturday and Sunday, so Saturday the 13th, just for tastings. So we've got, um, I think we can have 10 people, so we've got some seats there and you can do a seated tasting. And then we're open again on Friday night from the 3rd. So the 3rd of July, we'll be reopening again because we normally have about 50 to 100 people there on a Friday night. It's such good fun. And um, for just to describe where it is, I guess I would say, coming from down south. Yeah. Into Ordinga. And you've got the pub on the right. Pub on the new, right. New pub on the left. And then the new bottle shop. New on bottle the left. shop yeah. straight across the road. Then Next. go across to the better bottle shop across the road, which is mine. Oh, of course. And then you've got that beautiful old building where you've got Miss Gladys. Yeah. And then you've got, um, it's now called the Temperance Precinct. We've got Maxwell's and one of my uh, neighbours. And then um, Little Road. And Maxwell's, not Maxwell Wines. No, Maxwell. Maxwell's the coffee shop. Yeah. And then we've got a Little Road Studio there. And then we've got Sage House. So it's a really beautiful precinct. So you can do some shopping. You can either sit and have a glass of wine at our place while someone else shops, which is always a nice That's thing, or a good beer. For, good for the husbands. And the wives. Yeah, well, true. <laughs> if, if, if the husband likes uh, shopping. Yep, and then um, so our, th so our nice. third wine for tonight. This is my favourite little blend. So I work with the. Um, is that cats on the label? It's cats on the label. It's really gorgeous little kittens playing. So what this is all about? This was a, this is a blend, and yep. this is probably the first blend we've ever made. And I have a, a really fantastic young winemaker who's also the distiller for Never Never, Jess, who came on board for this collaboration because I like to collaborate with gorgeous young people who are passionate. And we made this one called Catnip, because once you start drinking it, you can't stop. So, right, it's like cat, sort of catnip. So this is a blend of Carignan, which is a southern Rhone varietal, so the south of France, just down the bottom. Yeah, and oh, not, not Italian. Well, that's one great. Right, okay. But it is in Italy as well. Oh, okay. Because it's in Sardinia, called Carignano. 
And then um, it's got Syrah from Blue at Springs from Mark Day's Vineyard. It's a fantastic Syrah. And then a little bit of Nero d'Avola, which is a Sicilian variety that we grow in McLaren Vale. So catnip is a really disgustingly smashable, drinkable and gluggable blend. That's what this is. And the cats are very People cute. People can see. You can see those gorgeous cats. Yeah. That's a great label. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And my, and my label, the people who design my labels are amazing. So they're two Indigenous graphic designers who um, walked into the shop one Friday night and said, we really love your wines. We want to do a wine label. And I was just about to redo my labels and I Perfect had time. a chat with them. And the next minute, the girls came up with some amazing labels. So, yeah, catnip. Oh, jeez. There's a lot going on in this class. This is bigger. This is bigger and juicier. Yeah. I had to go back for a third crack. There's a lot going on in that There's glass. There's a lot. I know. When we made this wine, you can see the colour. It's a really deep colour. It embodies all the... Hey, honey, what did you teach me before? So let's have a look. Can you see? You can't see your fingers through it as much, can you? No, I'm not, see, if, I'm not quite seeing as well as I was at the start over, of the show. If but. you look over the top, it's really hard to see the join between the stem and the... Oh, yeah? ...and the bowl. So this is a really deep ruby colour. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's probably more McLaren Bell. It's really more old school McLaren Bell okay. in, the, in that yeah. it's just in its style, in that it's juicy and rich and it has those really nice, it has nice, a nice texture. A little bit more alcohol in this one. Yeah, no, you can taste that straight away. The smell of it though, smells smells oaky to me. And it hasn't got any or, oak. Or earthy. My, earthy might earthy be a is bit. a really good word to describe it because it's got some lovely sort of savoury, earthy sort of notes. But for me, it's all about juicy, bright fruit, and and it's very textural, and it's quite yeah. slippery. It's one of those slippery, satiny wines that, yeah, you, you don't drink too much of this because it's fourteen and a half percent. But you know, a bottle will go down pretty quickly. Well, I'll be the judge of that. And this though. is this is why I call it catnip because once you have some of it, you start to have quite a lot of fun. Right, because yeah. it's a little bit stronger. Is that why? A little bit, yeah, and it's it's a bit juicier and it's a little bit more sort of. Um, well, it does a, it does a lot in the mouth. Oh, it does. It's it? Quite, yeah, we, we make flavourful wines, and wines should taste of grapes because that's what they're made from. Definitely. So. Okay, what have we got here? I'm hanging out to see, <laughs> see what Angela. Angelo. What Angelo's done for us. I'll, sh I'll show everybody out there before we get into it, but oh. look at that. Nathan's been desperate to get into this. Oh, I so have. So's, so's everybody else in So there. it looks like someone else has really got into it. I think it. they've really got stuck into it. So what we have here, See? lamb, mm -hmm. pistachio, Ooh. on a bed of um, mashed potato, crispy carrots. So a lot more going on in this dish, so you can put a wine with it that's got a lot more going on. Alright. Yeah, so probably those other two wines we've had would have been lost with this dish. So the, this uh, works really perfectly because you're matching the sort of like amount of flavour. So you think the others would have been overpowered by I the dish? I think they would be overpowered by the dish, whereas I think this will work really well. Ooh. Right. Um, can I have a fork? Yeah. No, no. No. Come on. No, you can't. No, he's just getting stuck into it now. Let me have a little taste of this, because I think this is going to really work. Oh. You have to eat most of the meat, because I'm not a big meat eater. But I'm yeah, that's unfortunate. A, what a shame. Isn't it? Play, play your CP for you. <laughs> wow, that is. That's cooked absolutely perfectly. Mm -hmm. And ah. Oh. And it is because it's pink. Should be yeah. pink. A uh, good Italian restaurant cooking oh, Australian yum. lamb. Oh, no, that's really delicious. Isn't it? I've got to tell you my food and wine matching philosophy. Oh, please do. It's pretty simple. Yeah. If you think about green wines, things like, if I, if I said to you, what is it, what would you say would be a green wine if you had to put it into a colour? Probably something like Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Or Riesling. Yeah. They go with green foods. So lots of things like salads or things that have goat's cheese or something that's really fresh. They're the yeah. sort of wines that go really well. Pink wines, and this is a really pink wine, goes really well with meat that has that pink tinge to it. Yeah. So, um, you know, it ma that matches really well with, with those sorts of... Uh, I think uh, Angelo, Angelo, might. Angelo might know yeah. his food. Yeah, he's right. And I reckon he knows his wine, to... hasn't he? He's done a great job. He loves Italian grapes. So we need, we need some more questions, because you can win this, win this really, amazing really, wine. It's, it's drinking really well tonight. Isn't it? It's and match with this food. Because this food's got a bit of richness, and this wine has a little bit of richness. Yeah, that's, we're pretty pretty lucky to have him actually drink the wines and make something to to fit it. This is a special that he's made oh, tonight, it, it's and then he's put on the menu really as well. well. 
Oh, it's sensational. What a great job he's done. We'll give him another plug in a minute. But mm. So we, we need some questions. About catnip. About the catnip. Or so anything. We, ask me anything. Yeah, ask anything about Italian wines, about how many times you've been to Italy. That'd be good. Oh, how many times I've been to Italy? Oh, about 100 times. 100 times. <laughs> Well, I, I probably got, well, I used to go, not anymore, because we're, we're stuck here. This is the time of the year that I'm, oh, what do you think sets McLaren Bosch apart? Okay, that's a really good question. And what I love about McLaren Bosch Shiraz is I think it's a little bit um, more fruit driven than the Barossa, which you, in the Barossa you tend to get a lot more oakier Shiraz. I think we've got that lovely moderating influence of the sea in McLaren Bar, so we can make very different Shiraz from very different parts of McLaren Bar. So I think we've got diversity and we've also got amazing flavour and some of the oldest vines in, in the world in McLaren Bar. And I think our Shiraz is exceptional. We'll never ever stop making Shiraz or Cabernet, but these other varieties are something that adds to the discussion and gives you, you know, some more words to, to put into our, our lexicon of talking about wines. So, yeah, you know, well, McLaren Bosch Shiraz is, is, is exceptional. I think pretty much all the guests, except for Luke, because he didn't know a great deal about wine, he came in last week, um, have mentioned that uh, Shiraz is so good in McLaren Vale because it comes from different places. Yeah. And, and, so and it's not very far away, sure. whether it be Selix Hill. Oh, hang on. Nathan Goad really needed his arm twisted to eat the larger share of that plate of food. That's Aaron right. with that question. Nathan, have you got a response? I just would like to know who's producing this show, really, <laughs> to put a question like that out. Thanks very much, Aaron. Oh. Much appreciated. He's hungry, lad. Joe. Hey, Joe, could you put this one in the cell? That's ah. Now, Joe, you've asked a really good question because um, I just did a little chat on why, you, what wines you should age and what wines you should drink now. And I'm going to tell you this wine is probably one that I would recommend that you drink between now and the next two years. I don't think it's a wine for cellaring because it doesn't have uh, a lot of tannin. Right, it's I actually, thought it was, I thought it's because fruity it was too and good. delicious, but it doesn't have a lot of tannin. So if you're going to age wines, you really need to either have tannin, the stuff that dries your mouth out, or acidity. And some wines are just made to be drunk now. So something like a Sauvignon Blanc is fresh and fruity and looks really good when it's young. I mean, a lot of us look really good when we're young. Um, and then a wine that has a lot of tannin and has some oak to it is probably a wine that you would like to age, you age a little bit more because it's got structure to age. But this sort of wine, drink it now because it's at its best. It's, it's fruity, it's fresh, it's got good acidity, it's juicy, it's textural. And uh, let's face it, you know, not all wines are meant to, to, to be put away. Um, th this is going to turn into interesting flavours and develop into interesting flavours as it ages. But I, I think it's pretty much right now. Uh, it's banging. Yeah, no, I reckon it's, yeah. it's definitely been drinking. I'd be drinking it now. But that was a really good question. That was a fantastic question. So if you would like to have your favourite winery or maybe a winery that you've popped into once upon a time and you'd like them to be on the show or you know of an amazing um, rest local restaurant, you think their food would pair really well, or even on the restaurant tour, knows a lot about wine, then um, let's get them on the show. Let us know, throw the comments up, put any, um, send us an email, message on Facebook, whatever it is, and um, we'll try and get them on the show. Now, if um, obviously we've been pushing people to come down, I've been down to the cellar door. I know how much fun it is. I know it is fun. I kick everyone out at nine o'clock, though. I'm well, really bossy. Usually in bed. It's nine o'clock. So yeah. go, go home. But great for an afternoon. Oh, and really fantastic to come down if you're going like to out to dinner. Yeah. So you can come to us. You can have an aperitivo. You can have a glass of wine. You can try and taste um, a new producer or taste some of our wine, and then um, go go on to dinner. And get educated while you're there. Yeah, but in a really, really normal, like this is wine for normal people. It's not, you know, we, we don't, we, we like, you, you might be sitting next to a winemaker at our cellar door, um, but everybody's there to have a good time and to learn because the more you know about wine, the less you know about wine. True. Nobody ever knows everything about wine. It takes a long time. And I'm getting pretty old these days, so I've been in the game for 40 years. And uh, I keep going down wormholes. There's always more to learn. Now, speaking about learning, mm -hmm. I've been hanging to bring this up, but I didn't know really how to phrase it without embarrassing you or talking you up too much. But right. I heard a rumour, yep. it might have been from Gary, that you are one of the only, or the only Australian, and one of the very few in the world 
too hot. I don't know what the exact award is, but oh. Italian. So I'm an Italian wine expert with Vinitaly Academy and I'm one of only 15 people in the world and the only Australian to pass the Italian wine expert exam. So I am, yeah, I get to do some really fun things in Italy. I get to go and talk and, on panels and um, talk about grapes and geek out. But yeah, yeah no, I love pretty... Italian wines. Oh, hang on. Luke, Luke's put another... I think he's after a bottle of wine, Luke. We, uh, are you doing any live music too? We do from time to time, Luke. Not every week, but we do have... I think the last group we have is the Yearlings. They played at our place, which was fantastic. Um, we have um, we have our favourites. We have uh, Wayne that comes in and plays a lot, and also Bombay that come and play a fair bit. So, yeah, we do have some music, but it's really sort of quite... It's more about the ambiance and camaraderie and having a great time, and the music sort of... Well, more in the background, and um, but we have a really good playlist because we've got really good, uh, good taste in music. <laughs> You've always had a good taste in music. Yeah, I know. But for a long way ago, that's so good. Sorry, I've got isn't that? No, have, have, have some more. Mm. Mm. So, we've got to um, talk about who's on the show for next week. Oh, who's on the show for next week? I'm not real sure. Oh, yes, I am. Of course, I am. Fox Creek are on the show for, for next Stephen. week. Stephen, Stephen comes to our place all the time. Does he? He's amazing. We had a really great. He's a great winemaker. He's making some really cool wines. Yeah, yep. we, we and so Stephen... And Ben. And Ben. Ben Tanzi. Ben Tanza, fantastic. Great uh, winemaker. Soap, soap's great. And gonna, oh, ask, we're gonna, ask, ask me about um, Nera Davila. He loves it. All right. Maybe you can, you can fire him a question next week. <laughs> I will fire him a question. One, one that's really difficult to answer or something. Put no, him on the spot. he's a great guy. No, they, they are great blokes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where can us know this? Oh, online, Adam. Yep, online. Just, or call, just call us. If you just call us, we'll always send some down. Or just come down to the... No, give us a call. We'll, we'll send it down. We send it everywhere. So, we've got to um, talk about the deal. What deal have you got for the punters? So, what we've got is we don't usually split this. So, we've got... Um, we're, do, we're going to do just for your people. We're going to be doing three bottles for $30. So, this one's normally $20 three? a bottle at the cellar door, but you get three for 30 bucks. Um if you want to give us a call and we can arrange for you. So all they've got to do is mention they saw it on yeah, SA One saw Weekly? Yeah, they it on SA One Weekly. Give me a call at the cellar door um, or, send, or flick me an email and uh, we can arrange to get some wine to you. And, uh, yep, so we're only doing it three packs for you because it's normally six packs. Oh, that's excellent. Thank, thanks very much. You're I did welcome. see a comment there about, um, I thought Jerry flicked away really quickly, was what's the best wine to drink when the Lions are winning? Who are the Lions? The, the Brisbane Lions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> who, 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 right, last time Jill Pardon comes my, That's it. Um, oh. Rady, hey. I do send in to state, Rady, and definitely for you. This is Nathan's sister, by the way. Well, maybe <laughs> I, I could I could bring up some catnip to drink with Rady and whilst I'm watching the Lions win. Well, you could. That, you could. I could do that, couldn't I? You if, could. You're to, if you're allowed to travel. Oh. So we've got to, once again, Angelo, we've got to pump his tyres up. Grazie mille, Angelo, for a, a di Trattore di Roma. Did such a great job, didn't he? He did a great job. This is such good food. So yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to have to say we're going to wrap it up. I think we could talk, talk to it's Jill. It's my bedtime. Oh, we could talk to you all <laughs> night, and I could, I could actually learn something. So my special guest, Jill Gordon-Smith, Fall from Grace. Thanks heaps for coming on. I really no appreciate worries. it. That's really cool. And thanks yeah. for the questions. See you next week, guys, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live.